Cagney and Lacey, and Michael Douglas. How are they connected? Let's get started. In the Season 4 episode of The Streets of San Francisco, titled Trail of Terror, we can see in the opening credits that there's a special appearance by Meg Foster. I know her best as playing Detective Chris Cagney in that first season of Cagney and Lacey, though she would soon be replaced by Sharon Gless for the second season of the show. Gless, of course, played Michael Douglas' wife in the 1983 film The Star Chamber, which then got me to thinking about how many ways Michael Douglas is directly and indirectly connected to Cagney and Lacey without ever actually appearing on the show. Let's start with this guy played by Greg Malavey. Malavey was in an episode of M.A.S.H. titled Major Ego in 1978. In the episode, he spends the evening with Major Margaret Hotlips Houlihan, played by Loretta Swit. Swit played the role of Christine Cagney in 1981 in the television movie pilot for Cagney and Lacey. Swit would later meet her first and only husband, Dennis Hollihan, in the M.A.S.H. episode You End the Night and the Music in 1983. That same year, Hollihan would play a banker in the movie Scarface. Scarface, of course, was directed by Brian De Palma. De Palma at one time expressed interest in directing what would later become the 1987 hit Fatal Attraction, which starred Michael Douglas. Interestingly enough, the screenplay for Scarface was written by Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone would direct Michael Douglas's Gordon Gecko in 1987's Wall Street. The character Lou Mannheim in Wall Street was played by Hal Holbrook. Hal Holbrook played in the Star Chamber with, of course, Michael Douglas. Holbrook also played in Capricorn 1 in 1977, as did Brenda Vaccaro. Let's continue. The Star Chamber and Capricorn 1 were both directed by Peter Himes. Himes also directed the often overlooked movie Outland in 1981. Interestingly enough, John Ratzenberger and Francis Sternhagen both appeared in the film, and they would play mother and son on the NBC comedy Cheers. James Sicking, like Francis Sternhagen, had a pretty significant role in Outland, and roughly eight years earlier, would appear in the Streets of San Francisco episode titled Act of Duty from 1973, as did Brenda Vaccaro. Vaccaro would also play in another episode of the Streets of San Francisco the following year in the episode The Most Deadly Species, as did James Luisi. Luisi played in Norma Ray in 1979, as did Gail Strickland. The always intriguing Gail Strickland played in The American President in 1995, starring Michael Douglas. Strickland also appeared in 1980's King Crab, as well as Joel Fabiani. Fabiani played in the Streets of San Francisco episode titled Most Feared in the Jungle, as did Kitty Wynn. Wynn would star opposite of Al Pacino in The Panic in Needle Park, and for reasons unbeknownst to me, wasn't a bigger deal after doing that film. At any rate, Alan Vint also had a role in that movie. In 1977, Vint would play in the movie Checkered Flag or Crash, starring Joe Don Baker. Seven years prior to that, Joe Don Baker would play in the 1970 film Adam at 6am, which starred Lee Purcell and Michael Douglas in one of his first theatrical roles. Many years later, Lee Purcell would play in Eddie Macon's run in 1983, as did Kirk Douglas. Needless to say, we all know that legendary screen actor Kirk Douglas was Michael Douglas' father. Diana Douglas, Michael Douglas' mother and Kirk's first wife, also played in the Star Chamber with her son Michael and, of course, with Sharon Gless. That same year, Diana Douglas would appear in the Cagney and Lacey episode, The Gang's All Here, in 1983. Tracy Walter also appeared in that episode. Walter, a few years earlier, would appear in the WKRP in Cincinnati episode, The Contest Nobody Could Win, in 1979, as did Richard Sanders. Two years prior to that, Sanders was in the movie Good Against Evil in 1977, as was Kim Cattrall. That same year, Cattrall was in an episode of Switch titled Dancer, a show in which Sharon Gless is one of the featured characters. Tara Buckman also appeared in that very episode. A couple of years later, Tara Buckman was in Death Car on the Freeway in 1979, a TV movie directed by legendary stuntman and director Hal Needham. Needham, of course, was a longtime friend and collaborator of Burt Reynolds. Shelley Hack also had a role in Death Car on the Freeway. The one-time Charlie Angel would appear in a standing room only television production titled Vanities, starring opposite of Meredith Baxter and the always charming Annette O'Toole. Interestingly enough, the first production that played at the now-closed Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater in Jupiter, Florida, back in January of 1979, was Vanities, starring old pals Sally Field, Gail Strickland, and Tyne Daly. Tyne Daly, of course, played Mary Beth Lacey on the longtime CBS police crime drama Cagney and Lacey. 
Daly would team up once again with old pal Gail Strickland in the TV movie A Matter of Life and Death in 1981, which is about a nurse who spent her life caring for terminally ill patients starring Linda Lavin. Lavin was once married to Ron Liebman. Liebman starred opposite of Sally Field in Norma Ray in 1979. Liebman would later marry Jessica Walter. Walter starred opposite of Clint Eastwood in what was also his directorial debut in the movie Play Misty for Me in 1971. Five years later, Eastwood's Dirty Harry Callahan character would team up with Tyne Daly in The Enforcer in 1976. Several years prior to that, Eastwood starred in The Beguiled in 1971, a movie which also included appearances by Joanne Harris and Darlene Carr. Darlene Carr played Carl Malden's daughter on the streets of San Francisco in 12 episodes, one in particular titled The Commitment from Season 2, which included none other than Tyne Daly. Back to Joanne Harris. She played in two episodes of The Streets of San Francisco, even playing a character romantically involved with Michael Douglas's character, Inspector Steve Keller, in the episode The Victims in 1973. What a lovely surprise. In real life, she used to be romantically involved with Clint Eastwood. She also used to play in the pretty good TV show Most Wanted, as did Shelley Novak. It's not Gary Sandy, and it's not Matthew McConaughey, it's Shelley Novak, and he appeared in a 1975 episode of Switch, as did Sharon Gless. Gless, of course, played the role of Christine Cagney in all but seven episodes of Cagney and Lacey. Gless was best friends with Kevin Dobson, and they had worked together on a number of projects over the years, including an episode of Kojak titled Law Dance in 1976, as well as the TV movies The Immigrants in 1978 and Hard Hat and Legs in 1980. Gless also shares the same birthday as Clint Eastwood, both born on May 31st. Gless was also a regular in Marcus Welby, MD for a year, as the love interest of James Brolin, though she would later be quoted as saying, They said that there was absolutely no chemistry between James Brolin and me, and I got fired. He was waiting for Barbara Streisand, I guess. I don't know. Interestingly enough, good pal Kevin Dobson had a role in the 1981 romantic comedy, All Night Long, starring Gene Hackman and, lo and behold, Barbara Streisand. Back to Sharon Gless one more time. In 1972, she was on an episode of Cool Million, an American crime drama and probably one of the lesser known shows from the NBC Mystery Movie Umbrella program. The show starred James Farentino playing the role of Jefferson Keyes, a former CIA agent who's now gone on to establish his own private detective agency, charging his prospective clients $1 million per case. Cool. Farentino's second wife was Michelle Lee. Kevin Dobson would play Lee's second husband on Knott's Landing, the longtime CBS primetime soap opera and spin-off of Dallas. Lee and ex-husband James Farentino appeared multiple times on Celebrity Bowling. Favorites of Celebrity Bowling, the dynamic duo of Michelle Lee and James Farentino, or Mr. and Mrs. Farentino. In another episode, Farentino was teamed up with another ex-wife, Elizabeth Ashley. Who were they up against? None other than Brenda Vaccaro and Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas and Vaccaro had a four-year living relationship, having met on the set of Summer Tree in 1971. Back to Elizabeth Ashley. Ashley appeared in an episode of Cagney and Lacey titled The Psychic in 1985, and years earlier, would be in two films with Michael Douglas, Coma in 1978, and When Michael Calls in 1972. Al Waxman would also have a part in that movie. Al Waxman played Lieutenant Burt Samuels on Cagney and Lacey. The King of Kensington played in 1988's Switching Channels, as did Kathleen Turner. Turner will forever be linked with Michael Douglas, playing in Romancing the Stone in 84, The Jewel of the Nile in 85, and finally The War of the Roses in 1989. J.D. Spradlin also had a role in the movie. Spradlin, one of Hollywood's most prolific character actors, played in the TV movie The November Plan in 77, as did another longtime character actor, Martin Cove. Marty Cove played Victor Especky on Cagney and Lacey. He, of course, played John Kreese in 1984's The Karate Kid. Many years prior to that, Cove would appear in an episode of Charlie's Angels titled Sammy Davis Jr. Kidnap Caper in 77. Harry Rhodes would also appear in that episode. The following year, Rhodes would play a very small role in Coma in 1978 with, of course, Michael Douglas. The year prior to that, he played on an episode of Most Wanted titled The White Collar Killer in 1977, 
as did Catherine Cannon, Joey Tata, and John Carlin. John Carlin played Harvey Lacey, husband to Mary Beth Lacey, on Cagney and Lacey. Interestingly enough, Catherine Cannon, Joey Tata, and celebrity bowling host Jed Allen, a.k.a. Rush Sanders, were all Beverly Hills 90210 alumni. Oh yeah, that's James Eckhouse, also of 90210 fame. Bumping into Michael Douglas. Small world. When people say that Alex is the villain, or that it's Dan, just say that it's actually James Eckhouse who started that chain reaction. Back to John Carlin. He was in the Sword of Justice episode, Blackjack, in 1979. Great episode, by the way. As was Ned Glass. Glass was on another show that was cancelled way too soon, Bridget Loves Bernie, starring David Bernie and Meredith Baxter, who played newlyweds on the show and in real life would be married for 16 years. Bernie was on another show that got cancelled too soon, the NBC crime drama Serpico. Like the 1973 film, which starred Al Pacino, it too was based on the Peter Moss book of the same name. The always charming Annette O'Toole appeared in an episode of the Serpico TV series titled The Indian from 1976. The following year, she had a role in the movie The War Between the Tates in 77, as did Harvey Atkin. Harvey Atkin would play Desk Sergeant Ronald Coleman on Cagney and Lacey. In 1982, Atkin would play in the horror movie Visiting Hours, as did Lee Grant. Grant played in The Landlord in 1970, as did Bo Bridges and Susan Onspock. Onspock started running in 79, opposite of Michael Douglas. Hi. Circle back to The Landlord, Trish Vanderveer also had a small role in that movie. Interestingly enough, Vanderveer started one of my favorite Columbo episodes titled Make Me a Perfect Murder. And I'd be hard pressed not to mention that Lee Grant starred in another great Columbo episode titled Ransom for a Dead Man. Trish Vanderveer was George C. Scott's wife from 1972 up until his passing in 1999. Lee Grant played Raquel Mussolini, Benito Mussolini's second wife, in the television biographical miniseries drama titled Mussolini The Untold Story. And with that, Mussolini was played by George C. Scott. Lee Grant was a longtime friend of Kirk Douglas and directed the documentary A Father, A Son, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 2005, which according to IMDb is a review of the personal and professional lives of Kirk and Michael Douglas while showing their complex feelings toward each other. Back to Trish Vanderveer. She was born in Tenafly, New Jersey. In the episode Make Me a Perfect Murder, James McEachin plays the projector booth operator. Years earlier, James McEachin starred in his own short-lived series titled, get this, Tenafly in 1973, which like Columbo, was part of the NBC mystery movie wheel. In 1976, McEachin played in an episode of The Bionic Woman titled Jamie Shield, a two-part episode. Rebecca Balding appeared in both of those episodes. Several years later, Balding was on a Cagney and Lacey episode titled Burnout in 1983, as was Jennifer Warren. Warren was in the classic neo-noir film Night Moves, as was James Woods. Woods was also in the Streets of San Francisco episode Trail of Terror, mentioned at the beginning of the video, as was his longtime friend Michael Douglas. Back to Night Moves. Brian Libby of Silent Rage fame was also in that film. He was also in an episode of BJ and the Bear titled Intercepted Pass in 81, as was Carl Lumley. Carl Lumley played Mark Petrie on Cagney and Lacey. He also appeared in an episode of Lou Grant titled Hazard, as did Ed Harris. Interestingly enough, Harris was also born in Tenafly, New Jersey. He also had a very small role in Coma, starring Michael Douglas. Ed Harris has been married to Amy Madigan since 1983. The year prior to that, she made her feature film debut in the film Love Child in 82, starring opposite to Bo Bridges. Years earlier, Bridges and Ron Liebman, who were both in Norma Ray, would star together in Your Three Minutes Are Up in 1973. Janet Margolin also had a role in that film. Margolin would appear in an episode of Police Story titled Requiem for C.Z. Smith in 1974, as did Paul Manti. Paul Manti played Detective Al Carassa on Cagney and Lacey. He also played in two episodes of The Streets of San Francisco, Going Home in 73, and Endgame in 1975, starring, of course, Michael Douglas. Paul Manti played in an episode of SWAT titled The Vendetta in 1975. Robert Yurk was one of the featured characters on the Aaron Spelling Leonard Goldberg ABC action crime drama, which was actually a spin off of The Rookies. Not long after that, Yurk played in the TV movie Leave Yesterday Behind in 1978, which starred John Ritter. 
Long before we knew him as Jack Tripper, Ritter played on an episode of Dan August, a QM production, starring Burt Reynolds and Ritter's castmate on Three's Company, Norman Fell. Oh my god. Well, he deserved it, Oh, man. shut up. Fell played in the TV movie Thursday's Game in 74, as did Sidney Clute. Thursday's Game. It isn't poker. Clute played Detective Paul LaGuardia on Cagney and Lacey. He also played Detective Sims on McLeod. Terry Garr also had a reoccurring character on the show as Sergeant Phyllis Norton. Garr was in the TV movie Law and Order in 1976, as was Robert Hedges. Robert Hedges played Manny Esposito on Cagney and Lacey. In 1975, he also played in the Streets of San Francisco episode School of Fear, as did Michael Douglas. On a personal note, going back to a late night of procrastination back in grade 11, putting off studying for a physics exam the next day, I noticed that Juan Epstein was in this particular rerun of the streets of San Francisco that was playing at around 11pm on CBC. I promise, I'll study as quick as this episode ends, I said to myself. Only to my surprise, next up on TV was that fantastic Star Trek episode where Sally Kellerman's eyes get all shiny, so I'm not missing that one. Promise though, once that's done, time to do the responsible thing and hit the books. No, Only thing is though, once that was over, turning the knob on my TV just to make sure nothing else was on, I noticed that even though I'd missed the first 15 to 20 minutes of it, Class from 1983 was playing on another network. Long story short, I didn't do too well in grade 11 physics. Pivot back to Michael Douglas, he and his wife Catherine Zeta-Jones share the same birthday. They also share their birthday with Mark Hamill. Hamill played Doobie Wheeler on the short-lived comedy on ABC titled The Texas Wheelers in 1974. The show was about the cantankerous but lovable Zach Wheeler, played by Jackie Lamb. What do I owe the honor of this surprise attack? Today was the last day of school. Three months of freedom. Woo! By gum, I clean forgot. How can you forget the last day of school? Easy. Last time it happened to me, I was only eight years old. <laughs> Gary Busey, like Hamill, was one of the brothers on that show. A few years later, Busey starred in the movie Carney in 1980. Meg Foster also had a role in the movie. Foster, of course, played Detective Chris Cagney for six episodes in the first season of Cagney and Lacey. Meg Foster made her big screen debut in 1970 in the film Adam at 6 a.m. starring Michael Douglas. If you've grinded it out and you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. Thank you for watching. Until next time.